All right, cool. All right, so then at the same time, government is even found into more violence because no point can you say, I do want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war, right? Oh, yeah, right. right. We have no freedom of economic choice. Oh, with the regards to your taxes, you still have to give me your money, you still have to give up your property. That's because correct. if you don't pay your taxes, you know, well, they'll just throw you into another cage, right? That's correct. Yeah. All right, wow. Uh, cool, you're, you're like pretty far ahead. Okay, so that's so that's how uh, government is more in that the government only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve ah. any problems versus, though, the plurality of nonviolent solutions that us three here already share, right? So it right. contradicts our moral position uh, to begin with, right? Um, well, I mean, so there's maybe a false dichotomy here, right? Sure, uh, certainly. I, I, I certainly don't use violence in my own life. Right. Um, but that's maybe uh, just because I'm the kind of agent that I don't think can uh, ethically use violence. Mm -hmm. um, but I think maybe a government is uh, when, when set up in certain ways uh, and constrained by certain conditions. Now, you might argue that governments actually don't act, operate that way. Um, our government does lots of things uh, that maybe aren't in line with what you might think of as uh, reasonable restrictions on the use of violence, even by a governmental institution. Right. But I don't think that in principle there's, a, there's something wrong with saying that certain kinds of things, and governments maybe one of those, can use violence, uh, and, and individuals can't, or other kinds right. of things. Can. Okay, okay, so you can have those kind of community setups, and that would be wonderful. Uh, would you say, though, those kinds of governmental communities would be consensual, though, right? To have oh, a consensual um, contract with your government, and you allow them to have that like legal recourse? Uh, with some way of uh, fleshing that out, yeah. Though, right. uh, but I do think if we use any kind of constraint, um, geographical or uh, uh, by ge uh, geography, population, ideology, whatnot, there will be... Look, if we're going to even entertain the idea that a government could use violence in a, in a justifiable way, I mean, that is what I'm claiming. Right, right, I'm not right. Saying, I'm not talking about, a, say, a, you know, sort of anarchist, uh, neo-capitalist um, uh, rule by sort of complete mutual agreement between parties. Right. Um, I'm talking about... Uh, certain groups being authorized to use the threat of force and authorized uh, to use the threat of force in pursuit of ideals and maybe people within that have to consent but without w w outside of, uh, of that social contract uh, those same rules don't apply. Authorized right, right. by who? Well, authorized by the, the, the members of uh, whoever agrees to be bound by such. Whoever formally agrees to be bound by such? Because that's called a contract. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, well um, you gotta, be, you gotta be careful, right? Because if, if so, the model of government we're all familiar with uh, creates uh, boundaries, limits its scope How by geography. Oh, by geography. Right, right. Okay. Sure. okay. There's a U.S. government. There's a you know British. They're so very limited with 900 bases so, over the world, though, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, well, but, but still. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's running right now. Yeah. Can you give us a few minutes? Uh, yeah. Thank you. So. Um, Don't worry, but I can do some work. I got nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So, um, there's a sense in which um, very many citizens of the United States don't consent to the United States government, right? right? Because they're born here, right? right? That sort of thing. And uh, there's a, a sense in which many people um, who maybe, maybe, maybe think that's okay. Maybe, maybe it's okay for them to, to tacitly consent until they turn 18. Uh, and then they can leave, right? And they are actually allowed to leave. Now, there's an, uh, a di another question of whether or not they have anywhere to go. Right. Uh, to another tax form? Well, even if they could that's leave, you have to get permission to leave in the future. Right, right. Which, which presumes in some way there, there is the authority in the first place, right. and we can segment off this section of land as... Right. As, so let's go back to contracts uh, then. Okay, right. so, so you would advocate for, I guess, these kinds of communities based on contracts then, right? Okay, so then would you acknowledge that the Constitution then is not a contract at all? Oh, because um, you never signed it. You were not born right. back then. You can't force a contract into a baby, right? Well, I mean, why, why, do we, why do we have to be limited by this narrow conception of contracts? Yeah, we have because, a, it's, it's a very normal common sense notion of contracts. Right, we can have, um, uh, I guess, common rules to be agree on. No initiation of force, no uh, no stealing, no murdering, no theft, no assault. Right. Uh, you know, we can have those big uh, initiation of force, everything that violates property rights, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, of course, I guess you can come, I guess, to a social norm of that acceptance. It doesn't right. have to to be codified by law, but of course, in the event that you have a dispute with your neighbor, you'd want something a bit codified. You want some kind of contract to kind of help negotiate those disputes, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. uh, so you can have a community that has a contract. You know, in the event that uh, someone steals here, or like for example, you go to an apartment complex and say no cats allowed, but right. if there is, here's the fine you pay if you find out you have a right. cat or right. get kicked out. But you give tacit consent and agreement to that, right? Right. Uh, so I guess those kinds of contracts, I guess communities based on contracts of consent of voluntariness. Um, yeah. 
Okay, cool. I guess then uh, that's pretty much where we're trying to advocate ourselves here versus uh, what does exist is not consensual at all because you never gave consent to your social security, right? But right. so you're forced to pay for it and when it's time to withdraw yourself, there's going to be nothing left for you, right? Um, I mean, you can't, when people say implied consent, it's like, well, then show me your contract then, right? It doesn't right. exist like the social contract. Well, there's a sense in which um, there's also an issue of fair play here, right? Because uh, I may benefit, and in fact intentionally benefit, from many government programs and protections. Sure. And in fact, many of the sort of public goods that uh, you might think justify government, I'm not saying they do necessarily, but you might think justify government, like public defense and punishment. Uh, public um, de uh, defense, like yeah. security? Okay, right. so security. A, a monopoly on uh, security. Right. Monopoly yeah, on defense. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think about competing uh, services then? Uh, competing services for defense, right. Um, well, uh, there's, uh, there's an issue here, right, which is that um, if it's national defense, right, that we're talking about, there's a sense in which, um, and I'm not talking state, nation, I'm yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. this very, very large area of geography. Yeah. There's a sense in which I can't help but uh, wind up protecting everyone in the nation if I'm going to protect anyone at all. Right, right, right. Right. I can't just protect just some apartment complexes and not not the others. There is the a there is a there's a way to, to do that though. Uh, you could take a current situation where there's no contractual agreement at all as to what the terms of security provisions are going to be. Uh, there's also no um, no recourse, no set recourse for what's to happen if the provider of these services is to fail to deliver right. to our standards what we'd expect from the services, and at any time res reserve the right to increase their revenue for them for those services to determine how much we pay them for these services for such undefined services any any company that came to you with that kind of contract you totally not want anything to do with it bankrupt it right or at least yeah. you want the freedom to cancel or subscribe anytime you wanted to right uh, well I mean maybe I might want that for my own self-interest but I doubt the feasibility of instituting such a system. So, for example, you know, if I'm worried about, say, uh, I don't know, Russia coming over and carpet bombing my neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, if I want to pay, if I if I trust any company, let's say a company comes and says, yeah, we'll protect your neighborhood from the Russians if you pay right. such and such a fee, and I think, oh, this is a good deal, I'm going to opt in. Okay. Well, let's say my neighbor doesn't opt in. Okay. Uh, how on earth can this company possibly protect me and not my neighbor? All right, so, all right, so for example, people will have like insurance contracts, for example, it says, you know, I would like to power an insurance car to contract that, you know, my neighborhood doesn't get blown up, you know, that the house that so lives in. So I have to take uh, out insurance on my whole neighborhood. Yeah, well, you wouldn't have to take out. A lot of people in those particular neighborhoods, all of them commonly would also like to have that defense. You I mean, you wouldn't be able to support one big uh, agency well, but, by but themselves. The minute we have a sufficient level. All you need is just a SAM system. You created a, a mobile SAM system right there. It takes down some of the planes. They'll, they'll find it's more cost incentive. Uh, it's cheaper to, to provide those defensive services than it is to go on, on the offensive. Right, but the, but the minute we hit the minimum, standard needed to uh, uh, in institute a sufficient level of defense. Let's mm -hmm. say the same tower. Let's say I need yeah. ten of my neighbors, yeah. right, to uh, to fund together to, to build this tower. Yeah. Um, the minute we get whatever minimal threshold, there's immediately a perverse incentive. Uh, which like which what, is, about, what do they call them? The uh, oh, uh, freeloaders. Freeloaders, right? Yeah, freeloaders. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, where uh, you know, if I've got so let's say I've got ten neighbors and we get we get together and we're like, yes, all right, we're gonna get our sure. we're gonna get our turret defense, and then we have eleven. If somebody else comes in and thinks, oh yeah, yeah, this looks great, you know, I want to come in and I'm going to be ethical and play my part. Yeah. Well, maybe all of a sudden I'm not sure if I like paying the, uh, the monthly fee for my SAM period. And I know that if I opt out now, which again, I have the option, yeah, 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 yeah. right? Uh, that's fine. We've still got enough to have the, have the turret up. Right. Um, so, you know, magnify this by... <laughs> many, many, many orders of magnitude when mm -hmm. you come to... to wouldn't you, wouldn't you kind of not want your neighbors to think that you're a jerk? Well, well, here's the thing. Okay. So, so here's an easy solution, right? You identify the freeloaders, right? And say, well, you know what? You're obviously not helping to pay for this little community's defense. Uh, well, then, you know, sorry, I'm not. Uh, you become like a social pariah. You know, you're not invited to my bakery store, to uh, my hotel. Uh, uh, sorry, you're not providing for the defense. I mean, no one has to provide your services. Good. It's all volunteer yeah, interaction, right? right? So, um, uh, who, who picks out the freeloaders? And, uh, and, and are they forced to leave the neighborhood? They're not forced to leave all their benefits. No, no, no. I mean, it's, an insurance, a it's an insurance like contract so I have. So the insurance says the event that like uh, that bombing comes and ruins my house, well, they fail to provide that service and they pay out that contract, you know, for maybe a million dollars, right? Of course, the person that didn't have that contract, you know, didn't have an insurance policy, so... Yeah, yeah, but I, but I, but I don't want an insurance policy. I want I want somebody not to come blow up my house in the first place. Right, that's I what I'm saying, yeah. To turn, uh, but part of insurance right is compensation for if that is failed to... To be prevented. So for the insurance yeah, company, yeah. they want to make sure they don't have this now. This is a very particular type of insurance, right? right? And they don't want to pay out a million dollars to everyone else. So they're going to take the most incentive. And no one to could ever guarantee that. that anyway. 
does. I, I feel like the government does. Prevention. <laughs> I feel like the government <laughs> ensures that actually pretty, I think pretty human, well. I think the human incentive of mutually assured destruction ensures that fairly well, but not necessarily the state. Well, yeah, uh, there's also that. Uh, no one's ever attacked a country that has uh, nuclear missiles. You know, well, that could be a great deterrent from any kind of invasion force. I think that's a very complicated issue, and I think largely external. So yeah. let's just let's just stipulate for the case at hand. Well, there's no nuclear weapons. Let's just let's just rule that out, and we'll say forget nukes. I mean, okay. there's gonna be lots of yeah, other yeah, types yeah, of weapons, yeah. and in fact, you know, it's an incredible amounts of, right. of, of force um, present. Uh, and and so, I, I feel like my my government assured protection by the U.S. armed armed forces is. Uh, I'm really quite satisfied. You feel that you're being protected? Oh, yeah. All right, so, so let's just as a measure of standard of protection. That the military exists to, to defend your freedoms or grant you more freedoms, right? Do you feel freer today uh, than you were five years ago, 15 years oh, ago? Um, 50 years ago? Well, there was a time uh, you didn't have to ask permission to leave to have a passport, right? You continue to lose more freedoms under that case. You know, it's here at home where we're losing our freedoms, not overseas, where the military is alpha to that and that particular distraction, you know, promoting democracy and bombing, bombing right. democracy in other countries. I mean, there's this jump here between protecting me and protecting my freedoms. And I think when you get into freedoms, what freedoms are we talking about exactly? Um, and, and what value do I place in my freedoms? Maybe I'm willing to give up certain measures of my freedoms in, ex in, in exchange for protection. Right. That's fine. You do that contractually without including all of us and that you aren't on board with what you consider to be an uh, adequate amount of freedom to give up. Right, 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 right. But um, do you feel proud of this uh, military engagement uh, all over the world? Oh, 900 yeah, that, bases, that, bombing children, drone bombing. That's, that's what happens when you have a nationalized uh, military force, right? Uh, and you can't cancel or, or stop that. You have no voice in the matter, I say. And if they need more uh, revenue, they'll just take more revenue. Well, there's a sense in which maybe this... Uh, the, the, so again, the, the key isn't necessarily the existing structures. It's what, what structures would exist in this hypothetical that you're suggesting, which is a... Uh, uh, yeah, anarcho-capitalist society that doesn't have a force. Wow, you're very familiar with the terms. That's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, cool, right. cool. Um, so uh, let's say I've got, let's say I live in such a society, and uh, my uh, security protection firm, and let's say it's a very, very powerful firm because, uh, and, and very, very large, it's a huge market share. And in fact, there's, you know, extensive evidence that pure capitalist systems uh, do trend towards monopoly. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then I say, and then they start doing some things that I don't like. Right? Um, maybe the, you know they're you know, doing some little sneaky assassinations or bombings. Maybe there's uh, you know some people over there who want to want to want to do something, and maybe they think it's a threat, but other people don't think it's a threat. And there's this you know sort of shaky ground, or maybe even it's just uh, the guy who runs the place is sort of an asshole, and, and he just uh, has has come to power and is now sort of using uh, his his military force, right, sure. uh, in a manner that I don't, I don't agree with. Okay. Well, let's say I, I decide that I want to, I want to opt out. Yeah. Right? So I go and I say, well, I'm canceling my contract, and they say, okay, you know, that's, that, that's totally fine, but uh, we, uh, we, we also have uh, agreements with lots of these other sort of agencies, and uh, if you opt out of that, you know, we'll all just cease to provide our services. Mm -hmm. Now, we're, we're, we're definitely not going to come attack you, right? Yeah. We're not, we're not going to throw you in jail, we're not, you'll, you'll face no penalties, but you'll lose your power, you'll lose uh, the, any security protections that we would provide you, including protection against other people coming and, you know, robbing you, killing you, etc., etc., etc. You'll lose uh, access to the markets, you'll lose uh, access to the internet, you'll lose access to this and that and that and that. So that's this the stipulation of the not, contract that you signed? This is not a coercive threat. Right, right, but right. This, is, this, is a, this is a contract that you signed, the event that I cancel this contract, you know, I uh, feel like I no longer feel safe, there's no guarantees, you don't ask for guarantees about companies so that you're not going to proceed in that kind of caution. Uh, um, Right. right, like the first time. Well, uh, so let's, the thing is, well, 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 let's talk about your company. Does it your right? pure cap, uh, the pure a free free market society, for example? You have competing dispute resolution organizations. So it's going. They're well, tent. At the very second they see that they're screwing up, they're going like, look what they're doing. Come with us three months off. You know, thirty percent off. And you the know? second thing you have to realize is that if there were so many people that were so opposed to the action of this monopoly, and then all these other companies could not provide service to those people, they're losing their revenue too, and then they break their contract with the monopoly power. The only person who has power is the consumer. I mean, so to what you do. To so they'll say, look at my credit rating, look at my user ratings, you know, look, goes back 10 years, five stars out of five stars. If you've never right. harmed anyone, we'll give you a guarantee. Well, yeah. an, but look, look, first uh, off, that presumes yeah. um, the existence of a highly competitive market. Um, what, do you, what do you mean it presents? Uh, well, look, look, and that's what happens in a free market. There's competition. Oh, no, Anyone I, can I, compete. I at least now you have the freedom that, to compete. The, you don't the, need to have an arbitrary piece of paper act a permission free market from a system. A free market yeah. system could, uh, exists in which, in principle, I have the choice between competing options. Whether or not they're actually viable competing options is a completely separate question. And I think that, 
it's highly unlikely, particularly in, in uh, uh, many of the, how do we say, uh, goods, the uh, industries in which government provides most of its benefit. Um, or at least he heavily regulates most of its benefits. So, you know, public utilities, national defense, et cetera, et cetera. Right. These are uh, industries with very, very high startup costs, right, that have sort of unique geographical uh, commitments, right? Okay. They have to build a whole bunch of telephone poles. This is why, for, for instance, that uh, um, we have um, uh, the systems that we have in place in terms of regulating, say, electricity, where we have, you know, I don't have a choice between Dominion Power you don't and have something a choice. else. These are rent seeking yeah. companies that have had a lot of lobbying control power in the state, right, right, so right, 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 that position right. of power. But the, the state, and, and, and the you state, don't have the state has put restrictions on who exactly right. can operate power. And I understand completely that the state is doing that. But there's a reason that the state does that. Uh, now, may, you maybe don't think it's a good reason, reason, but there is a justifying reason, and that's that uh, telephone poles. Uh, are, are, it's really inconvenient if I have ten different companies with a telephone uh, of, of uh, telephone poles or power grids running all over my city, and if I'm a private company and I own a set of uh, you know electrical grid or, sure. or something like that, then I'm certainly not going to let my competitors use my infrastructure. Uh, right? but, but, what, what incentive do I have for that? So you believe that uh, businesses don't cooperate? Oh no, I, do, I think I okay. think businesses do cooperate. I mean, there are some, for example, you, when it's in their mutual self-interest. Exactly, and so some many many businesses mutual self-interest to cooperate and to share some of those resources. You can look, for example, at AT and T and uh, many other service cell providers that they don't have a particular uh, geographic region of coverage, so they will borrow their antennas and provide those uh, communications lines. Right, even though they're their competitors, they borrow some some of their abilities to, to provide that services. I mean, I yeah. don't know what what it's right. going to look like, but, uh, I guess, but, but it's not going to have that monopolistic control that's because been. If that's not what people want. That's what won't exist. See. If the, uh, underlying concerns people have with free market economies is that they provide people what they want and not what other people think people ought to want. Uh -huh. Right. Um, I mean, I think ultimately that's an empirical question, right? It's this, this uh, sort of question of what, would the, what actually would result from a, from a heavily free market system. I think it's very, very hard to predict. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't expect you uh, to provide <laughs> me a sort of detailed map of exactly right, right. how such a system works, et cetera, et cetera. That's unfair. Um, but I don't think that... Uh, you know, just the fact that the burden of proof on you is not on you to provide me with a very complete uh, notion of this system. It doesn't. It doesn't. Doesn't follow that you can just assert that your system will have the result well, that you desirable. I have no system to, to impose. The only thing right. I have to say is that in a free market, you have seven billion uh, of competing of ideas. Seven billion competing ideas to provide you uh, a solution that's free from violence, free from the initiation of force. You have those competing ideas. Some may not work. You know, business is fulfilled, and that's great. That you know, they don't know how to allocate those resources. They don't know how to completely uh, to 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 trade that uh, and to use that. And that's perfectly fine. So you have a lot of uh, competing ideas that will fail, and some. Trying that will succeed maybe for 30 years, and then the next idea will come and uh, provide a better upgrade, a better version. But at least we have it now that we can freely choose, and that's what I would want. Uh, I want to free from right. the initiation. Of course, well, if I don't look, pay their their bill, I go to jail. I don't want uh, that kind of system. Well, the fact that uh, the free market encourages innovation, I'm not trying to dispute. Right. Um, I am trying to dispute the idea that somehow the presence of this kind of innovation or of a, a heavily competitive, well, that's not fair, a, a completely free market system mm -hmm. in the long term that never uh, imposes uh, regulative, uh, ultimately coercive right, regulative uh, powers will likely result in a highly competitive market in which my uh, personal liberties and such are respected. Yeah. And that's different from saying that, they're, uh, that, that the free market system wouldn't result in a lot of innovation or doesn't result in a lot right. of innovation. It's just saying that, um, look, I mean, even if there's a bunch of new ideas and lots of people having great ideas, doesn't mean Google doesn't own <laughs> a great, 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 great many, no, many sure. of these ideas and doesn't can't easily, through the accumulation of economies of scale, acquire access to new ideas. And can, you know that doesn't mean that even if I've got better service, if I have uh, a new choice of wow, that's a great idea. Yeah. Oh, I don't like this other idea so much. It doesn't mean I'm free from Google. I mean, um, you can use Yahoo. You can use Bing. You don't well, have to use Google. Uh, there yeah, are other website right, providers. Uh -huh. You can use Safari. You can use Firefox. You right. can use Mozilla. And, and every use... time some some new innovator comes along and has a great idea, yeah. and Google snaps them up to their uh, comparably higher market share and greater influence on the market. Sure. Then the choice between Google and the other, you might say, oh well, it just becomes easier. But that doesn't. It, it doesn't. It becomes easier in the sense that Google becomes more and more attractive an option. Uh, but that doesn't minimize anything that I find objectionable. Google's about. more of attractive of an option. What's wrong with taking it? Oh no, I do take that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. But let's say, let's say there's things that Google are that, uh, that Google are doing that I really, really don't like. I really don't agree with. Yeah. 
right? Maybe it's personally expedient for me to go uh, join up with Google. But let's say I'm also like really leery of some of their policies and practices, some of their business practices, or maybe I'm really leery of certain uh, directions that they're pushing the market yeah. in terms of their research or whatever. Now, you might say, well, you know, you've ultimately got the choice. You just have to weigh these moral convictions of yours versus the, you know, expediency. And, uh, and, and maybe, maybe, maybe that's okay. But um, I don't think that it's clear that uh, having a free market system in which such a structure can proliferate, where we have very, really very, very expedient options, got great service, you know, I'm really happy with my service, but it's also doing some things I'm really uncomfortable with, versus having uh, uh, some other services that are significantly you know, less good, there's a dramatic drop in quality of service, but are, but are also operating in a way that I find ethical. Right. I don't think that that situation, we're, first off, I think it's, it's, it's likely that such a situation would uh, occur in a, in a completely free market system and would occur fairly often. Right. And I think that uh, such a situation, I don't, I don't think that that does protect my liberties. Well, I guess there's one person certainly in charge. More, certainly not more than, than, than a competitive system in which uh, there are like, ultimately coercive but restrictions these on these companies in terms of the types of business practices that they do. And I think that in some ways purifies the decision where I can really just make the decision based only on the quality of service, only on narrowly economic grounds. Right. Um, and I don't have to consider like, oh, well, you know, they are, you know, really, really making a lot of this, uh, this Chinese labor and those people are really suffering, that kind of thing. Now, that obviously, you know, maybe I'm mixing my metaphors. I don't think Google does that. Right? <laughs> well, I, I would but say, I, I would say, well, one you know, point that even regardless in, in right. the free market, there's only one boss, there's only one person in charge, and that's you, the consumer. Without the consumer, they have no product. They have no, no the, the division of, uh, I guess, in, right. industrious uh, research or anything like that. If, if the consumers don't like that, then they're gone. They go bankrupt. If they can't satisfy well, the consumer Maybe the demand, majority of consumers uh, don't care. And then, and then the minority about. goes somewhere else and create their own yeah, sort of business. Uh, now, the thing is, it's difficult to find that well, today when you have nearly half your income stolen at gunpoint your taxation, when you, when you have only all these permits and regulations that prevent you. For like, for, for example, the uh, renovation here on uh, Broad Street of that bank building, yeah, it's $100,000 yeah. in permits. Right. Permits alone. That's like more workers they could have hired. That's a lot, yeah. of, a lot of stuff they could have put back into the right. building itself to make to improve its finer qualities. Right. Uh, so you wouldn't have all these different ways that robs you. I mean, you look back at all the regulations that were put in place since 1960. It's sort of has to be directly, it's made you 75% poor. Yeah. You know, so you have a lot of people who have a lot more um, capital to, to invest, a lot yeah. more wealth to accumulate, to try to compete with other ideas. It's like, well, yeah, they, they might be a monolithic uh, cor corporation, but at least right. now anyone can compete. Well, no. in principle can compete. I agree. In practice, I doubt it. So they do it all the time. I'll say, well, how about this, right? I used to work in construction. How about this? Construction company A, yeah. uh, you know, offers great service. They get their deadlines done on time. They work quickly. They work efficiently. They you get a good, good, good product. But they also don't have um, uh, protections for their workers. And in fact, they encourage their workers to engage in hazardous. Who would uh, work for them? Ha hazardous. <laughs> well, hear me out, right? So then, let's say there's a company B, dramatically worse off. Uh, in terms of the, the quality of their service, yeah. it has work protections, but that means they're slower. They tend to uh, they, they tend to, to not do quite as good a job. They don't have their deadlines. They uh, spend more on materials because they only buy from other sort of sure. dealers that fit their ideology. Wait, so I'm a I'm a so. All right, so I'm, I'm in the market for a construction company. First off, we'll do the, the secondary case, like I'm a worker on the market for a job later. But let's say first off, I'm just I'm just looking for companies to uh, to build my building. Okay, uh, company A gives me this really great bid, super low. You know, it's like very very cheap for the work I want done. They offer a great deadline, whatnot. Company B offers me a much much worse bid. They have a sort of worse reputation in terms of the quality of their service. And take a lot longer, cost me a lot more. But I, I know that they're going to treat their workers better. Yeah. Now. Now, uh, you know, you might say that the business, that I as a business owner have a choice. Maybe I can put my business into business B because I'm just convicted. But the majority of the market is not going to do that. Or at the very least, I don't think we can assume the majority of the market will do that. And I think that there's pretty good empirical research that backs up the idea that the market won't do that. That they don't advocate for better uh, standards? Uh, that, that, they, that when the choice is between uh, sort of the practical concerns that they're worried about right. and sort of high-minded ethical considerations. Yeah. People very, very often... That is very true. I agree with you. I think the ethics part right. is kind of what's missing a lot part in, in society. Right. A lot of people don't understand a lot of the concepts right. that you and I are talking about, so it's difficult to, for them to have consistent right. ideas of what is ethical. Right? They'll say, right. well, stealing from you and mugging is bad, but taxes is okay. So yeah, uh -huh. the ethical right. portion is uh, kind of what's, what's lacking. That's yeah. something to help advocate towards that. Right. Um, uh, though ethical disagreement is a little different from ethical non-commitment. Right? Uh, 
you know, I might agree in principle that it's horrible to mistreat uh, Chinese workers or something like that. Sure. But I might, uh, that, that might not actually translate to a big change in my buying habits, right? And I think that's different than saying that, well, I think that taxes uh, are, are wrong and some other guy thinks taxes aren't wrong. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a different issue. Well, it shouldn't be a different issue because it's still a violation. It's theft is theft, right? It's, it's, well, that, it's the ethics that the state has put upon us here in, in our society that's confused our ethics to look at things differently, right? Well, look, there's, all I'm saying is there's a difference between someone who thinks taxes, who has not have an ethical uh, objection to taxes, uh, and then on the other hand, someone who has no ethical objection to taxes and says, well, taxes aren't stealing in the sense that stealing is stealing, right? That's, that's one dispute. And there's another dispute, which is, oh, no, we both agree taxes are wrong. I just don't care that much. Oh, that's very true. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th those are different questions. Yeah. Now, uh, if I'm a worker on the market between these two construction companies that I described earlier, um, I, might say, I might think, uh, well, you know, I really like to work for Company B. I know they treat the workers well. I know that, you know, I'm, I'm really sort of, I've got family. I don't want to do this sort of hazardous whatnot. But I go to Company B and they're like, I mean, you know, a lot of people want to work for us, right? Like, uh, we're just sort of full up. And maybe my skills are such that even if I don't really want to work for A, I'm willing to work for A. So then I go take a job at A. A still gets enough workers. And uh, B continues because they're, again, offering overall a poor quality service because people do tend to make decisions based on practice and certainty. They're often over ethical concerns. Uh, that means that I, as a worker, I'm still forced into working for A, or at least I'm willing to work for A in, in, in the sense that that's my best option. And that continues to addiction. You hear say, oh, well, the company B says, oh, a lot of people want to work for us, so we can't hire you. So all the other people, basically the entire rest of the supply of labor in the construction force has to go over to company A, but somehow they can hire all of those people. And no, there's no company C, and there's no uh, overflow of labor in company A. Uh, I mean, that's an illustrative example, right? This is a, it's this a very is, limited it's one. Yeah, it's extremely that. limited, actually. Um, but I would, I would not say that's a free market, and it, it, so it's limitedness in that anyone can compete. One of those workers can be, you know, already have ah, 50 so. years of uh, experience in doing this stuff. You know what? I'm going to create my own company, and I'm going right. to hire it. Let's go so, over here. Uh, Someone right. like you, for example, uh, upset of the way uh, these two companies right. uh, treat their workers. Oh, I mean, so, so, I mean, yeah, so I agree. In principle, right, I can decide... Ah, well, I mean, again, and look, we're just saying for the sake of argument there are these two options. There might be 10 company A's and 10 company B's. There might be 100 company A's. Uh -huh. There might be a Walmart versus uh, Costco. Costco exist. pays more than, than the employees and, of and Walmart, there might right? Be, you're right. Um, there might be. Uh, but to say that I, as a uh, construction worker in this case, right, just because I have the option, just because I'm not prohibited mm -hmm. from going off and starting my own construction company, that doesn't mean that I can actually do that. Why not? Right? Why, 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 what, 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 what is, how am I start a construction well, company? Well, the startup costs for any construction business are enormous. Yeah, that's, you can start a Kickstarter ca uh, campaign. You can ask that for friends for uh, donations. Hey, do you like to, like, let's get some startups, some friends to get together. Help me have a great idea. Here's my business plan. Have a good market so, person. But ultimately, I have to rely on the fact that somebody else is going to be as concerned about this ethical issue well, you uh, as I am. I think yeah. either somebody really wealthy or somebody, enough people that are Aren't that wealthy that I can crowdsource it and you know yeah. build, and it build happens the all the time that way. That way. But you know, if right someone way. is working with company A, they're working with company A because they think they're in a better position in doing that than they are not doing that. So I kind of find it difficult to object against someone doing what they feel puts them in a better situation than they would otherwise be. Ah, uh -huh. right. Um, I mean, so they might uh, be perfectly willing to, to jump ship from A to B or to an A company to a B company if we want to expand yeah. the, the pool here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but that, so they might be really willing to hop to B, right? They might not think that working for A is ultimately in their best interest, but given the circumstances, it's their best option. Yeah, oh. the best option as opposed to being unemployed. Yeah, right. I, I would yeah, say yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. what exists today so because of the limited I'd, I'd say, uh, competition, you only have A and B. Well, oh, we're, so I see like the example oh, like oh, you're providing seems like right, that sort right. of stuff can, like, kind of exists so currently that, today because um, it's difficult the, to the, enter the, the market today. Uh, I see. So you yeah. think that the, the, um, impact of government is so great that, that it creates this kind of system which wouldn't right. exist. And, I, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, again, I, I'm not exactly sure what sort of the free market system would work like, would work like but I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's not entirely clear that the system that you're suggesting would not lead to a situation. Like well, there would be competing systems, is what I'm advocating for, instead of one monopolized one, right? So with, with a competing system that's voluntary and consensual, then right. anyone can compete and you can find a system that maybe, maybe my system fails, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, maybe the one over there, I'm more envious of that particular System, you know, may, maybe a resource-based economy works. Maybe it's oh, no, no, works. No, no. Maybe, I mean, I'm, uh, when, I, when I say you're, the system that you're advocating, I'm not committing you to a specific conception of how the economy has to operate. I'm talking a system in which the ultimate governing rules are completely free market principles. Right. 
right? That's we have the system that I'm talking about. All right, so the government rules would be also a uh, polycentric legal ecosystem. So you have competing uh, areas that provide law, competing areas that provide security, uh, competing ethical, uh, I guess, rules that people uh, agree to. You can have your community that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. Right. It's like your Amish community. You can have a dog friendly community, a cat friendly community, but then they're like beholden within the context of those communities that they sign to those ethical principles. Right. So for example, you don't like this particular ethical uh, standard that this company is providing, so they, right. that community also agrees with you and the same standard, so they won't allow those kind of companies to work in that kind of community. Yeah. Um, com so, I mean, there's a sense though in which still the minority is in, is in some trouble, whether it's ethical or, or uh, in terms of... Um, so look, I mean, if I have if I have a strongly held moral conviction, that's also very unpopular. Yeah. Right. I'm I'm no. a, I'm, I'm a just now you're going to say very very little. Power. Is that necessarily a bad thing? I mean, what if someone has the moral conviction that certain acts that we all determine are horribly immoral are moral? I mean, nobody can tangibly grab anything and say yes, this is morality, and this is not. Well, I'm saying there's no necessary connection between the popularity of a moral idea and its well and its merit. Right. Like for me, I, I I enjoy drinking. There are countries in the Middle East where it's illegal, but people don't drink because it's illegal, but because of their social norms, you know, part of their uh, their culture. Uh, and I would say that's a minority for the rest of the world. But when you break it down, you don't have these nation states anymore. You think you have thousands of minority communities. Everyone uh, becomes a minority, and the individual is the only minority. Uh, I see. Um, um, so then, yeah. and then that's where you have this competition of preferences. Right. Like you go to um, to a mall, you don't see one T-shirt store. You see that, right. you know, a couple dozen of those. You go to a food court, all of them trying for you to try their, I guess, try a sample. Right. Um, so you have those kinds of competition. You have the different varieties that I guess cater to those preferences. Um, and that's really what it is at the end, just catering to preferences. So, um, unfortunately, I do have to leave. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but, that's uh, been very fruitful. I'm so yeah, glad you stopped by. I say, uh, to, to, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the last word. I guess. <laughs> Please, <laughs> <laughs> because it's your show, and you'll have many other words, right, with many other different people. We'll get it, yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, right, exactly. Right. Um, uh, right. So, first off, I think there are, there are a lot of assumptions in the model that you're presenting. I think that uh, it's not fair for me to um, assume that my way is right, and it's not fair to me to make unfair demands of you in terms of providing very, very specific information about how such a system will run, or the likely consequences of such a system, or you know that kind of thing. Um, but I also don't think it's, in, it's, it's entirely clear to me that many of the assumptions you're making are warranted, and that are okay for you to make. You know, I mean, like, who's the, where's the burden proof really lie here in specific domains, right? Uh, and second off, I think even if uh, you know, you think that, well, maybe this uh, A and B situation is less likely under a free market. And, you know, maybe, uh, you know, the fact that I can, in principle, come out and start my own company and whatnot, maybe that'll override uh, some, uh, you know, some, some of being put in some, type, some, some of these kind of forced choices, that kind of thing. But I think there's another question which still remains, which is looming large of this whole discussion, which is, am I better off in this other system? Mm -hmm. Just by, by virtue yeah, of having yeah. this, or am I better off with the system that we have now? Or, or, or even What's the trade -off? better off, yeah, better off in a system better than the one we have now, but it's still in principle status, right? Because it's not fair for me to take a sort of straw man, you know, horribly monopolized free market system and then hold this up and say, this is what's going to result if we let these guys have control, right? But it's also not fair uh, for, for uh, the alternative to be true and say, well, there's there's this awful system and uh, and then that's the system we have now and that would just necessarily result from uh, a system that has coercive government. Right. Because again, the, as you say, the, the dispute here is not between specific systems in terms of very specific economies, very specific uh, you know um, market forces, ways, the situations of the world is. It's between very very large ideological camps, which is on one hand no coercive status control, on the other hand. Some coercive states, at least some, and there's right. varying strengths, right? Um, but I think it's not clear to me uh, that, yeah, that yeah. this option is better than that. Well, I would love to continue more discussions then at another time if you like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 this is going to be very, very so fun, absolutely. Yeah. Appreciate it, have fun. You too, take Bye care, guys. man.